Hi, you're watching Trailers from Hell. I'm Josh Olson, and I hope you won't hold it against me that I'm not wearing a necktie as we dive into the Thames with Alfred Hitchcock and Frenzy. I dare say you are wondering why I am floating around London like this. I am on the famous Thames River investigating a murder. There is nothing like a Hitchcock trailer. I love these trailers he did where he walks and talks you through the events of the film. His tremendous wit and personality really come through, and it's fascinating to me that someone who was such a showman was also one of the greatest and most influential filmmakers in the world. It's been said by many people before, but it bears repeating. If you really want to learn how to make movies, study one good Alfred Hitchcock film. It's all there. And boy, is this a good one. It's a great one. It was his penultimate film, made after several movies that simply didn't live up to Hitch's normal standards. It wasn't unreasonable in the early 70s to suspect that the master might have finally lost his touch. He'd been working for a long, long time. And then in 1972, along comes Frenzy. It's a classic quintessential Hitchcock setup. The quintessential wrong man scenario he was so fond of and played with in so many movies. Hitchcock always worked with the best writers, and this one's no different. Anthony Schaefer, who'd written The Great Wicker Man, as well as the play in the movie of Sleuth, uh, also wrote the screenplay to this. What's really interesting about Frenzy, though, is that while it is structurally and thematically a classic Hitchcock film, Francois Truffaut's comment is really quite true. He said, it feels like a young man made it. It really does. It feels like a blazing hot first or second timers movie in all the right ways. It's bursting at the seams with energy and wit, and it's Hitchcock's only R-rated movie. The violence is more graphic and disturbing, and there's nudity, but it doesn't feel like an old man getting away with something naughty. It feels like he was just naturally telling this sort of story the way he'd always wanted to, but had never been allowed to. The shot of one of the Strangler's victims with their tongue sticking out of her mouth is just horrific, one of the many iconic images Hitchcock gave us over the years. Among the many great moments are a scene in which Hitch drains all of the sound and pushes in on the main character just as something creepy happens, and it's just terrifying. And the movie ends at exactly the right moment. This really is a master filmmaker at the top of his game. It's got a terrific cast of lesser known actors. Hitchcock had seen Barry Foster in Twisted Nerve, and John Finch hadn't done a lot, although he had been in Polanski's Macbeth. They're both terrific. It was also Hitchcock's return to England. He hadn't made a movie there in many decades, and much of this was set in Covent Gardens, where his father had been a greengrocer. It is a triumphant return, and uh, he followed it up with a movie family plot that isn't quite so great, but is still a, a kind of nifty and fun Hitchcock movie. I, I suggest you do this with all of them, but especially this one. You should watch this trailer without my narration. How do you like it? 